How can a string vibrate at a fundamental frequency and also harmonic frequencies at the same time? Why do a flute and a violin playing the same note have different harmonics? And what does this have to do with planetary motion? These are historically deep questions in mathematics, and some explanation can be found in Joseph Fourier's theory of harmonic analysis, which can be simply thought of as writing a periodic function as an infinite sum of sine and cosine functions. While this may seem odd, consider that in Calculus 2, we learn how to write some functions as power series. So writing a periodic function as an infinite sum of other periodic functions can seem reasonable. If we assume that a periodic function f of x can be expressed as an infinite sum of sines and cosines, the notation we can write is f of x equal a naught plus the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of a sub n cosine nx plus b sub n sine nx, where n is an integer and negative pi to pi is the period. When we learned how to write a function as a power series, we saw that the coefficients could be written in terms of derivatives of the function. With a Fourier series, the coefficients a sub n and b sub n can be found with integration. First, we can find a naught by simply integrating both sides of our equation for f of x over the interval from negative pi to pi, and we get a naught equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x dx. Next, if we multiply both sides of the equation for f of x by cosine mx for an integer m greater than or equal to 1, and then integrate over the interval negative pi to pi, we get that a sub n is equal to 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x times cosine nx dx, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. And finally, if we multiply both sides of the equation for f of x by sine mx for an integer m greater than or equal to 1, and then integrate over the interval from negative pi to pi, we get the coefficient b sub n is equal to 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x times sine nx dx, where again n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. With some conditions, we can get a theorem. If f is periodic with period 2 pi, and if f and f prime are piecewise continuous on negative pi to pi, then the series a naught plus the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of a sub n cosine nx plus b sub n sine nx with the coefficients we just described converges to f of x. Let's look at an example with the square wave function. A square wave is a periodic waveform that is only represented by odd harmonic frequencies, and it is similar to the sound of a clarinet. The mathematical representation of a square wave is a piecewise continuous function that can be written as f of x equal to negative 1, where x is between negative pi and 0, and f of x is equal to 1, when x is between 0 and pi. Using the theorem, we can find that the coefficients will be a0 equal to 0, a sub n equal to 0, and b sub n will be equal to 4 over n times pi if n is an odd integer, and b sub n will be equal to 0 if n is an even integer. Then, by our theorem, the series for f of x becomes the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of 4 over n times pi times sine of nx, which is equal to 4 over pi times the quantity sine of x plus 1 third sine of 3x plus 1 fifth sine of 5x plus 1 seventh sine of 7x, etc. Our theorem states that this infinite sum of sine waves will converge to the square wave. We can hear what this means and also see how the addition starts to take shape on the oscilloscope. The factor 4 over pi is simply a scale of the amplitude, so we will just be focusing on the frequencies, which we can notice are odd multiples of the fundamental, and the amplitudes in front of each sine wave, which get smaller as the frequencies increase. For this demonstration, I'll be using four sine waves from the Moog synthesizer, and I'll add them one at a time using an audio mixer. With each additional wave, notice how the waveform starts to change shape with ripples on what appear to be the top and bottom edge of a square wave. I'll also plot the fundamental square wave so you can see the Fourier series against that. We can make this more precise with digital oscillators on the Yamaha DX7. And in fact, I can add two more sine waves in the series, one over nine times sine of nine X and one over 11 times sine of 11 X. 
This process of adding waves to create new ones is called additive synthesis. The opposite is called a Fourier transform, which is the process of decomposing a complex waveform into its sine and cosine parts. Applications of the Fourier transform are in many fields where it is necessary to extract a signal from surrounding noise, like cell phone communication, image processing, and sound recording. If you've ever used an app to figure out what song is being played in a crowded restaurant, the Fourier transform is being used. There are many instruments that use additive synthesis. The Hammond organ, which we've discussed in another video, the Yamaha DX7, the Fairlight CMI, and the Kurzweil K150. Additive synthesis is in fact the main focus of the Kurzweil instrument, which boasts 240 sine waves that can be used to create sounds. On this audio example, the first sound you hear is a marimba created with additive synthesis. 